This episode, I will be displaying and talking about an automatic electric, a.k.a. GTE, 120B telephone. This particular telephone is a what they call a touch call, uh, which is the same thing as a touch tone phone, except touch tone was a registered trademark of AT&T. So this was the independent telcos uh, pay phone, and uh, most of your mom and pops used Automatic Electric or Northern Telecom. Bell used Western Electric in their areas. So this phone is a Chrome phone that is in remarkably good shape for being about 50 years old. Generally, Chrome pay phones did not age well. If they were outside, they would get pitted and then they would rust and you can't do anything to them other than have it uh, uh, refinished. So this phone was a, a recent acquisition of a few years ago um, and it's in remarkable shape and I'm happy to have it. The uh, phone has been uh, put back to its, so to speak, original uh, configuration. I put in the BJ0004 upper housing lock, which was a common lock, uh, and then it has a lower vault lock, which was a new lock with two keys. The phone is connected on a ground start line at my central office at this time, so when I go off hook, I will not receive dial tone until I deposit a coin. I now have dial tone so I can dial. Alright, so I've just answered the number I dialed, and I have it on a speakerphone, so I would deposit a coin in this phone, an additional coin, and you will hear five beeps. This is what the operator would hear if you would have dialed zero to reach an operator. I'll place a nickel and a dime. When I hang up, the coins will be returned into the coin box. And yes, they were. I'll show the inside of the phone and give a brief description on what's happening in the phone. With the upper housing removed, you can see the inside of the automatic electric slash GTE 120B. So we have in here the motherboard control board. They referred to it as a chassis board. And this chassis board has the ability to be set up for different types of telephone lines. This phone could be used as a uh, setup for coin first, which is how I'm demonstrating it, or semi uh, Post pay, or I'm sorry, semi prepay uh, or post pay. It was very flexible, so this was a replacement for the triple slot phone. So you just option the board to match what the uh, three slot phone was set up for, and then you had a working phone. I will deposit a coin and then I'll have dial tone at that moment and uh, then I will dial a call and I can answer it and then you'll see the coin will be the coin relay operate and it'll drop a coin into the, the coin box which I don't have in the phone but I actually do have a coin receptacle for it. Um, I'll also dial a number that is not answered and the coin will go in the coin return. I will also uh, demonstrate what it sounds like if you were to dial the operator and want to pay for the call at the phone. The operator would hear a series of beeps depending on the denomination you uh, deposited and that's how they would count how much money was being placed into the phone. There's trigger switches down here, that uh, one for nickel, diamond, quarter, 
there's a flap here that when the trigger switch operates, it kicks the flap forward, which then, uh, in this particular case, would put a ground on the phone line uh, in order to get dial tone. Uh, or, uh, because I have regular central office trunks, it'll also provide a ground on the tip side of the line towards the trunk between the second and third digit, uh, which the trunk would determine at that point if there was a coin deposited or not uh, and allow the call to complete through. I have dial tone, so I will dial a number. I answered the call and hung up, and the coin would go into what would be the cash compartment. And I get my quarterback. So the next call I'll make will be um, to a, uh, a phone line that's got a speakerphone on it, uh, and I'll deposit coins and you'll be able to hear what the operator heard. I'll have to step in front of the camera to do that. So I'll deposit a coin. All right, the call has been answered, so I'm going to deposit a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. When I hang up, the coins will, of course, go into the uh, coin box if I had the box in there. I'll call a number that's busy and then the coin will be funded. So of course it is busy. Or I could have called a number and not answered. So the coin has been collect, uh, returned. These particular GTE 120Bs and Cs uh, was used by the COCOT, which is customer-owned coin-operated telephone. You could put in a ProTel board, Alcatel board, Intellicall, and some of these other manufacturers. 20-plus uh, years ago, I had over 140 uh, Palco GTE case-type uh, ProTel phones in the field. I uh, made my living off of that for several years. So um, these phones are very well built, very stout. The locks are Medico locks, which is a very good quality lock. Um, I've had to drill Medico locks and Western electric locks. And if I have my choice, a Medico lock is like, um, you know, cut and butter compared to a Western electric lock. Uh, these phones, again, could handle a lot of abuse that the public gave to it, depending on where they were installed at in, in hot, cold, dirty environments. They worked quite well. Um, Automatic Electric uh, made a lot of different variations of pay phones, and what is nice is this board could replace any of the triple slot phones if you were an operating phone company. So I have a GTE 120A that I'll be demonstrating shortly, and it's the rotary dial version, but the original chassis board was much different than this. This is a close-up of the trigger switch. I would deposit a quarter. I would deposit a nickel. And I would deposit a dime. With the dust cover removed from the relay, I am right now looking at the top of the relay and the contacts. So when I hang up the phone, it will, in this particular case, refund my money. This is a close-up of the chassis board for the GTE 120B. If 
Here's the rear of the Herc switch assembly. This particular one is a touch call, also known as a touch tone. This is a close up of the upper housing lock. Here's a close up of the lower housing lock. This particular lock only has one key. It came with the phone when I got it. And I choose to change the locks out because I have a whole bunch of them with two keys left over from when I was actually in the payphone business.